three of Club Project 2020. Now, normally we do a live session for Club Project 2020, but because of what's going on with uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus, and uh, and all of the school closures and, and bars and restaurant closures and everything like that, we decided to actually speed up the pace at which we were going to go through Club Project 2020 so that we can get to a finished product as quickly as possible and then we'll iterate on that product, meaning we'll go back through the engineering design process again and try to make uh, our, our robo ball or DIY Sphero robot uh, better in many ways, okay? So we'll do a version one, which we'll hopefully have completed here in the next couple of weeks. And then after that, we'll go back through the process and try to build a version two and potentially a version three before uh, the year 2020 is up, okay? And so in service to that, we're going to go over a PowerPoint presentation that I have, and then we're going to get into uh, some Tinkercad drawings that I've already designed that uh, I'll put out there for you all to use if need be. But this will be part of the plan uh, section of the engineering design process, okay? So if you remember that the engineering design process is ask, imagine, plan, create, and then repeat, okay? And so we, the first two sessions were really about asking and imagining, and now we're on to the third section, which is planning, okay? And so what, what does planning entail? So here's our engineering design process uh, here. Um, if you, as you can see, it starts at ask, then it goes around to imagine, plan, uh, create, and improve. So um, let's look at planning. So plan. So this is really where you draw design. So what does our product look like from a dimensional standpoint? What materials is it made of? Um, and this is really where you get into creating blueprints or at least some sort of a, a construction, physical design, 3D model of what we're actually going to build or what we plan to build. OK, and so once in the engineering design process, once you start to create these drawings, you start to solidify your your final design um, a little bit more. OK, so and then after that, you have the create and improve, which we'll get to in the coming weeks. All right. Um, before we get into the dive deeper, I want to take a look at, um, here we are, uh, Tinkercad, okay? So here's, um, we're using Tinkercad. CAD is computer-aided drafting. Um, in Tinkercad or 3D modeling, you may have heard it uh, called 3D modeling. Um, we use it because it allows us to visualize uh, in three-dimensional space what our product or um, robot or whatever we're designing will look like, okay? And, and I've been working on our robo ball, as you can see, I call it robo ball here. Initially, uh, I think we settled on the name, which we'll call marble. Um, and so I went ahead and started to put together and pull together some different 3D uh, models uh, to to actually create our robo ball. Okay, so I'll go on into this. If you're not familiar with Tinkercad, it's a pretty pretty easy to use uh, software. That's why we use it. It's great for young learners. Um, and, and it's free. And so if you don't have a Tinkercad account, I suggest you, you go out and grab one. Okay. So Tinkercad.com. Okay. So it's pulling up my design here. And so it loads it in here and then I'll go over here and go to the home. Okay. So as you can see here is what I've put together as our design for the robo ball okay or marble all right so as you can see here's the uh, shell which is just a sphere um, it's 140 meters 140 millimeters I'm sorry so if you click on the dimensions here you can see what those are um, Um, so it's a clear ball. You can change the color of that ball to be translucent or not. Uh, if you go over here, but we're making it a clear ball um, because really uh, the, the the piece that we're going to use to actually build it is clear. Okay, so I'm going to start to move away some of these here parts and pieces. So if I move that away, the sphere, then you can now I can zoom in on some of the other parts and pieces. So. Uh, we've decided to go with a micro bit, and we'll talk about the micro bit 
in the coming weeks because we're actually going to have to program the micro bit to control our robo ball okay so we decided to go with uh, micro bit and then these motors here these yellow motors which we will use to turn our wheels and drive our robot um, they're called TT motors okay they're pretty standard hobby motors very inexpensive one of the reasons we chose them and then as a chassis or a frame for our robot we decided to go with Lego pieces now one of the des design decision behind that is that Lego pieces are readily available okay so if you don't have any Lego pieces lying around the house that would allow you to actually build this model it's easy to grab them or buy some from the store um, and so, so, so that you're able to do that, and that's one of the reasons why we chose to go with a Lego chassis uh, instead of like a 3D printed chassis or a metal chassis or anything like that. Okay, so micro bit is pretty inexpensive as well, uh, highly extendable, meaning you can purchase it, use it for your robotic ball, but then you can use it for so many other things. And we're actually going to use two micro bits: one to control our robotic ball core. I'll call this the core. And then the other to actually act as the remote control, okay? And again, in the coming weeks, we'll talk about how we're able to do that uh, and how to program our micro bits to do that, okay? Um, you see here, I have batteries here as well. I'll pull these out. This is a stack of four batteries here, as you can see. Um, I'll put that back. Uh, the Lego blocks here are rendered. And uh, Actually, uh, only a few of these items that I actually create in this Tinkercad. Um, some of the more complex shapes you actually can get from a website called Thingiverse. So let me let me actually pull that up. And you know, I pull a lot of 3D models from this website. Um, so as you can see here, they, uh, people actually come here. Any of the models that you actually design, you can upload here for others to grab as well, typically for free. Um, so let's see, uh, what can I put in here? Uh, let me put, put a drone, drone frame. And you can see all these different 3D model uh, frames are here, uh, typically for you to download for free. Let's go into one here. And we have a micro drone frame here. Let's go into here. And you can go through and see the different pictures um, of what it would actually look like. Um, this is for a DIY drone. And then when you're ready to download, you can download those, okay? And then if you download them, you can go back into Tinkercad and then you can import them, okay? Um, and then they'll come right in, all right? And so that's actually what I did with some of these Lego pieces. Instead of designing them from scratch, I just found them uh, on actually, you, uh, um, Tinkercad also has a gallery. It's not as extensive as Thingiverse, but they actually did have Lego blocks. And so instead of designing them from scratch, I just went out and imported them and put them into my design, all right? So, so pretty straightforward there. Um, just wanted to go over what the design actually looks like in Tinkercad. And I'll be honest, I actually skipped the plan step. And the only reason I'm saying that is because sometimes it's easier to actually just go and grab some pieces off the shelf, which I have a lot of Legos lying around. And so I just went and started, and I have some hobby motors lying around as well. And so I started to piece together uh, some of these items before I actually went into Tinkercad to draw them because it just was easier. To, uh, to mess around with the different configurations for the chassis uh, before I actually uh, needed to go in and create a 3D model of those pieces. And then once I was able to establish a frame that worked well, um, I went ahead and went on in and, and created a 3D model, okay? So uh, this is part of the plan stage of the uh, engineering design process. I just kind of wanted to walk you through some of the um, some of the cool features of, of Tinkercad. And uh, you know, if you need any of these pieces, uh, drop me a line, I'll, I'll, I'll send them to you and you can import them into your Tinkercad model as well. So you'll have it there. Uh, like I said, Tinkercad is pretty fun. You can mess around with, with some of the colors here. So uh, pretty easily. So I'll change, I can change that motor into a green motor if I want to, or um, a purple motor. Okay, so, you, so if you're really into just messing around with the colors, you could do that as well.
And so there you go. So hopefully that was informative for you. That was the plan stage of the engineering design process to actually just tinker around in Tinkercad and, and see what works, what doesn't work and, uh, and get to start to actually visualize what you imagine in at least a three dimensional space. Okay. So hopefully that's enough to help us get to the next session, which uh, will be session four, uh, the create piece. And this is where I actually have um, some of the pieces in front of me and you'll see me put them together and uh, we'll have a working prototype after that. So make sure you tune in to session four of Club Project 2020. Mr. Mo, I'll see you then.